Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Humari Mark. This edition stop stories. St. Lucia's livestock sector is on the alert against the African swine fever virus. Tourism officials welcome increased alert to the island. And Honorable Kenton Kazmi pledges to tackle the hurdles facing the nation's athletes. The African swine fever outbreak in China has captured the global pork industry's attention since 2018. St. Lucians are asked to remain vigilant as the Dominican Republic recorded its first case of the African swine fever virus. African swine fever, ASF, is a deadly viral disease that affects both domestic and feral swine of all ages. While it poses no risk to human health and cannot be transmitted from pigs to humans, its discovery in St. Lucia would have a significant impact on livestock producers, their communities and the economy. As of the 28th of July, the Dominican Republic reported its first case of ASF. Acting Chief Veterinary Officer of the Livestock and Veterinary Services Division, Dr. Sharmin Melvin Edwin, says the region is now on high alert to ensure that this disease remains at bay. We are happy that presently this disease does not exist in St. Lucia. However, African swine fever is a viral disease, a hemorrhagic disease, a disease that causes uh, severe hemorrhaging, internal hemorrhaging. Um, you see a lot of hemorrhaging in the, in the organs, in the heart, in the spleen, in the kidneys. Um, and so there's a lot of redness. You notice a lot of redness on the animal. The tip of the ears may be red, um, the abdomen, the extremities, very red. So it's one of the diseases that we call red diseases of pigs. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to the redness, you may see that the animals will be depressed, they'll hurdle together, they may become anorexic, they, they lose their appetite, um, so they will not eat for you. The uh, females may experience abortion, you may have vomiting, you may have diarrhea, um, you may have cyanosis, or which basically means that poor blood circulation, so you'll begin to see the areas beginning to turn blue because of the lack of oxygen. Um, and so this is highly, highly, we can understand the devastating effect that this would have on our pig sector if this is the disease were to enter. According to Dr. Melville Edwin, there is currently no treatment or vaccine available for this disease. She explains that the only way to stop this disease is to depopulate all swine herds that have been infected or have been exposed to it. Travelers are advised to be cautious and avoid transporting pork products as the disease can be transmitted through them. We need to have proper biosecurity measures on farm. What do I mean by biosecurity measures? Ensuring that you take the proper precautions. Persons who are coming, um, ensure that persons who are coming to your farm only are persons who only need to, who need to be there. Um, the clothing that you wear on your farm is not the same clothing that you wear out on, on the streets. Um, use your food bath, so disinfect your boots, disinfect your clothing when you, when, you, when, you, um, when you enter the farm or when you leave the farm. Farmers, the use of, of food scraps is, this, is not encouraged. It's not encouraged because, again, as we know, the virus can be transmitted through um, food, through pork products. However, we do understand the economic impact and the, cost, the high cost of production. So we're encouraging farmers, if you have to use swill, you have to use feed scraps. Make sure it is cooked at high temperatures. The virus can be destroyed at high temperatures for a certain amount of time. Dr. Melville reiterated the importance of public vigilance in the fight against the African swine fever. Farmers are asked to contact their local extension office or the Veterinary and Livestock Services Division if they notice any signs of the African swine fever. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Caribbean Airlines resumed commercial operations to St. Lucia on Monday with a non-stop service to Piaco International Airport in Trinidad. This marked the airline's first voyage to the destination since the closure of the borders in 2020 amid the global COVID-19 pandemic. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority welcomed the presence of Tourism Minister Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier in commemorating the opening of another key tourism source market. More in this report. St. Lucia welcomed the opening of another key tourism source market under the Caribcation brand on Monday, 16th August 2021 
when Caribbean Airlines flight number BW432 arrived at George F. L. Chance Airport at approximately 3.05 p.m., marking the airline's first voyage to the destination since closure of the island's borders in 2020 amid the global COVID-19 pandemic. The Sinusha Tourism Authority, the SLTA, is working with the airline through a very targeted digital campaign to promote the flight and on-island offerings, including accommodation and the most compelling experiences. Christopher Gustav is the marketing manager at the SLTA. We've been disconnected more or less from Trinidad for more than a year and a half. And seeing that the airline starting back again, we're really excited, you know, really opening our arms to our brothers and sisters in Trinidad and welcoming them to St. Lucia. Um, we hope to support this flight to ensure that it's successful. We'll have a, and we will develop an integrated marketing campaign to ensure that we promote the flight and ensure that it is a, a great success. In 2019, the Caribbean was St. Lucia's second largest market for stayover arrivals, with Trinidad and Tobago accounting for 18,971 of the visitors, a year-on-year -year increase of 10.56 percent over 2018. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority welcomed the presence of Tourism Minister Honorable Dr. Ernest Allaire as they welcomed the service. The regional market is so important to us, it's certainly one of the largest sources of visitors to St. Lucia. And Caribbean Airlines is very important and critical in bringing regional visitors to St. Lucia. And having you back in St. Lucia will certainly add a lot, you know, flavor to St. Lucia in many ways. And we're certainly happy that you've come back. Our small properties will be delighted. Our people will be delighted that we now have a service to ease the transportation between our, our islands. St. Lucia was the fifth Caribbean destination added to the island schedule for direct service in and out of Trinidad and Tobago. Captain Dale Harris is with Caribbean Airlines. We are delighted to once again serve the people of St. Lucia and connect you to the region and beyond. We welcome the reopening of borders and you can rest assured that Caribbean Airlines has all the protocols in place to look after your safety and well-being. As we approach St. Lucia to prepare for the landing, it was heartening to see the majestic pitons and your beautiful island again. Thank you for this warm welcome. Commercial operations to St. Lucia will take place twice weekly, on Mondays and Fridays, with same-day return services. For the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre is among scores of St. Lucians who have immersed themselves in the island's history in the context of the slave trade and European ties. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre has lauded the work of the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society and its partners responsible for the organizing of Caribbean Ties exhibition. The exhibition presents information on the impact of the European arrival in the Caribbean. During a recent visit to the exhibition held at the 100-year-old Annex, Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre pledged the government's support to protecting St. Lucia's patrimony. Having such an exhibition in this building, it shows that we still have things we can cherish. I want to tell you that the government will give full support to the, to the enhancement and protection of our patrimony and our, and our history. We need to know what happened before. It's important. So history and patrimony and cultural activity will, will be given a special boost in our government. I want to congratulate everyone who put this exhibition together. I, I'm hoping that that can be an, an affair that is is more that, that, that happens more often and St. Lucians, I want to invite people to come visit it because there's a lot to learn. President of the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society explained that the information being presented at the exhibition derived from a Caribbean archaeological project. He expressed satisfaction with the turnout to the exhibition. We've been heartened by the attendance so far, lots of children, because that's one of the, group that, one of the groups that you actually want to be involved. You wanted to uh, get them to understand the history, see the history, learn the history. But we've also had um, Sir Julian Hunt and Lady Hunt. Um, Lady Hunt, I think, was at one time the president of the Archaeological Historical Society. So we're heartened to see that this, um, these, this group of people actually came through. Um, we just had a visit from the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. So um, we have some, lumin um, some luminaries coming through 
and we're heartened that the, they are providing support to our exhibition. The Caribbean Ties exhibition is open daily from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. until August 31st. From the Government Information Service, Hermedy Mark reporting. Minister for Youth Development and Sports Honorable Kenson Kazme has pledged to tackle head-on the hurdles of the nation's athletes, especially elite athletes. Here's Ryan O'Brien. A number of the island's elite and emerging athletes participated in the first of a series of Symposia Tuesday, organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, aimed at their continuing holistic development. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Kenson Kazimir, reminded the athletes that the ministry will spare no effort in support of their endeavors. We at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports recognize that this program is not perfect by a long shot. That is why we remain open to your recommendations on how we can improve the program to serve you better. Rest assured, we are here for you because it's about you. We believe in you and will provide you with all we can to ensure that you peak. The sports minister encouraged the athletes present and those who followed via Zoom on the Ministry 758 Youth Connect platform to participate fully during the symposium. Let me encourage you to take this opportunity to internalize the information provided to you today. Make it interactive. Ask questions. Share your experiences. Let us make the most of this symposium. Officer in charge of the Division of Sports, Isabel Alexander Markey, urged participants to make full use of this opportunity. This event truly showcases the commitment of the ministry to care for the holistic development of the nation's athletes. Indeed, we have been going through some very trying times with the unpredictability of the COVID-19 virus, which is ever fluid, and we will remain committed to the task at hand. Tuesday's symposium covered four main areas, interview skills and managing social media, managing finances, how to become contract savvy, and mental well-being. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. In other youth matters, the Ministries of Youth Development and Equity collaborated to host a summer camp that has positively impacted the lives of young children in the Denry region. Shivroy Marius reports. For the children from the Denry North constituency, summer camp provided the opportunity to explore, learn new things and make new friends. The 2021 summer camp was spearheaded by the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and the People's Empowerment in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The summer camp was held at the Denry North Human Resource Development Center. Summer camp facilitator Claudine Luezo welcomed this venture and stated that this initiative signals the need for the community after school program to be implemented in the Denry North constituency. This activity, I can say, is greatly needed in Denry North and I believe this summer program should just be a stepping stone for an after-school program which we're trying to work on so the two have the two ministries collaborate because um, as you may know, Denry North have the, one of the highest rates of incest and child molestation and to me that's a way too we can help the young children and keep them occupied rather than having them home. The summer camp provided a safe and fun learning environment where the children were meaningfully engaged in a range of indoor and outdoor activities including arts and craft, dance, fun sports, board games and movies. I made new friends. We played arts. We make arts and stuff and we have lots of fun. I feel great because since I was born at home, my mommy asked me if I wanted to go to camp. I said yes because I was very bored staying at home on my own. I would say the camp was very awesome. Social Transformation Officer and Summer Camp Coordinator, Mrs. Danali Estava Santange, stated that the summer camp allows for children to socialize and interact with their peers and youth in the community. 
She also appealed to parents within the Denry region to support the ministry's efforts by sending their children to next year's summer camp. Well, um, since we were not able to sponsor many children, I know that there are parents out there who can sponsor their own children. So we're hoping that next year the parents will get on board and that they will see the benefits of camps. Like the children get to socialize, they get to interact, they get to explore who they are, they get to, you know, mingle with people in the society, in the um, community who are actually youth and, and community action oriented. So you get that kind of civic responsibility into your child. You know, it's not just about leaving your child somewhere. Minister for Equity, Social Justice and People's Empowerment, Honorable Joachim Henry, embraced this venture and emphasized the need for the Ministry of Equity to facilitate in the active development of vulnerable children in the various communities around the island. The investment in summer programs for our children, um, these activities like these are very important to the Ministry and we will continue to support and invest and ensure that we target the, the children who need to benefit, you know, from programs like this. They are very good programs. The children are exposed to, to sporting activities, they are exposed to musical, um, developing musical competencies, the, the steel band common board, and um, they are exposed to a range of activities so that they benefit. But um, an area that I think we need to um, review or look at the possibility of finding an attractive way or a very strategic way to improve and to transmit values, values of caring, values of appreciating life. The program focused on the holistic development of children, engaging them in personal development and enrichment activities. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and the People's Empowerment, I am Chevrolet Marius. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates, August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the Antian Novella Quayol. Monsieur Ta Homer, Monsieur Madame, Département qui n'est responsabilité pour information à uh, gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS ensemble et télévision nationale PIA NTN capacité nouvelle à uh, créole pour cette Primus Hutchinson ministre qui n'est responsabilité pour justice et égalité sociale on est avec Joachim Henry j'ai fait un grand appel pour Jean PIA venir ensemble après grand élection générale qui s'était le 26 août qui portait grande la victoire pour le gouvernement étoile. Ministre Henry fait déclaration ça là après cérémonie pour les membres parlement et les membres sénat là te sémanté à Kai Consit. Du grand grand cérémonie ça là qui était prend coup mardi bon matin assistant gouverneur général pour le moment Errol Charles te présenté plan gouvernement pour cette année pour venir et à parmi grand plan ça là c'est effort pour ces degrés assistance pour les jeunes cette ci mais ministre Joachim Henry dit que ça qui est encore plus important c'est pour gens cette ci venir ensemble pour coopérer pour que ça essaie effacer ces tâches politiques là et vieux ranger la vie peuple là encore ça bagaille moi même qu'a poisson hier côté l'agneau chai division parce que manière nous nous agir fait politique pour choisir un monde pour représenter whole place là ça a quitté d'ailleurs chai problème relation vie relation en communauté côté monde supposé qu'à vivre ensemble l'année en chai désagrément 
la ni en chai moun ki pa ka parler avec yon alors nous gouvernement ça là ni pour par exemple garder qui manière nous supporter tout moun ensemble et nous ka pres responsabilité ça sorier parce que oui comme nous a dit nous a bâti chemin nous a nous a bâti building nous a fait différents projets mais si peuple pays a pas ensemble pays a pas sa développement développer pour l'autre génération on a bien ri di aussi que la caïni en pile la terre à ce moment dire maladie corona qui a affecté pays a ben j'ai affecté pays a côté en l'eau monde perd du travail et plusieurs qui a souffert gouvernement ça la ka garder qui manière nous ça toi pays l'argent pour porter soulagement par yo chai c'est mon qui bousin avec nous ka travail vitement côté nous ça porter ces bail ça là so chai bagaille um, côté pépé c'est premier c'est ça nous ka garder pour en présentement ministre des affaires santé et ka faire les plus grands citoyens on a Moses Jabatis j'ai fait un appel pour pépé après dose la vaccine Ministre Jean-Baptiste dit qu'il a trouvé un plan pour les officiers santé pour organiser un programme pour ça indiquer cette liste plus concernant l'avantage la vaccine contre maladie corona principalement et principalement comme pays a déjà tombé en bas plus mauvais branche maladie corona que yo couyé delta variant Ministre Jean-Baptiste dit qu'il gouvernement pas ca obliger personne pour dans la vaccine mais yo ca encourager moun pour considérer l'avantage et importance la vaccine contre ces mauvais mauvais maladies corona qui en cette ici présentement comme ça nous ca mande pour prendre vaccinan en toute commune nous ca faire available pour prendre vaccinan nous ca mande toutes ces plissiens pour venir ensemble avec prendre vaccinan parce que à présent c'est ça qui ca empêcher ou venir plus malade Ça pas veut dire si on est vacciné on passe à jouer Covid mais si on joue Covid avec vaccinant um, ça c'est docteur avec officier chef médical en ministre nous ca dit moi c'est là on est vacciné ou pas ca tomber malade ou tant sérieux qu'on si ou pas ni vacciné comme ça gouvernement cette ici qui continue à travailler web à calter ça fait Covid-19 ça là expressement qu'on a ni Delta variant là moi ca parler avec vous l'autre semaine pour dire qui ça gouvernement qui a fait pour assurer que toute cette ici vienne plus concerné en les affaires Covid-19 ça là expressement Delta variant là point vaccinant moi quand encourage pour point moi même ça point moi quand encourage pour point vaccinant avec un travail ensemble pour détruire Covid-19 merci en chai commencer depuis le 18 en mois d'août chaque monde qui couché malade à l'hôpital Owen King ça ça vous suivre en ek yon seul visitation par jour pour seulement 15 minutes les officiers en ces ces grands centres médicaux qui situé à Millennium Height fait comprendre que yo très concerné et puis santé et protection c'est monde qui couché malade à l'hôpital et travailler examiner avec la famille et qui venir visiter yo alors pour suivre ces JID et ces web nouveau qui en place pour protection contre des grèves maladies corona qui a augmenté à cette ici sérieusement il était nécessaire pour cette médical là vivre visiter ces wag là qui en place pour monde qui a trouvé à l'hôpital pour visiter la famille examiner yo alors commencé depuis mercredi passé c'est né du temps pour monde visiter l'hôpital Owen King a changé et à présent visitation c'est pour yon né du temps seulement 5 heures après-midi pour 6h après-midi. Ça c'est pour essayer de réduire à ce que quantité de monde qui peut combler en l'hôpital là à dans un seul jour. Et que chaque monde qui est malade à l'hôpital là qui ça ni un monde en chaque visitation pour par jour pour entrer ouais yo et monde ça ça là qui en ex ça rester pour 15 minutes seulement. L'hôpital là pour maladie sévère et aussi turning point qui a continué et puis c'est règle là qui déjà qui a existé qui déjà il était déjà implémenté depuis l'année passée c'est règle neuf ça là pas qu'il là pour longtemps et c'est pour seulement essayer réduit à ce risque pour monde qui euh, couché malade à l'hôpital là les travailler avec la famille euh, pour pas tomber malade par covid en parlant de ça cette médical là qui a fait public la ça aussi en même façon 
pour les gens qui sont à l'hôpital qui pour venir accoucher, un effort pour établir une façon pour balancer les bénéfices pour eux et pour essayer de réduire à ce risque pour les gens ne pas trouver maladie corona. Travailler, ça c'est pour les gens qui accoucher, la famille et qui ont. Par contre, quitter la famille, examen entre en margin, ça c'est chambre d'accouchement, comme qui était possible avant. Les officiers qui ont fait public la savent que ça n'a pas là pour longtemps et c'est pour seulement réduire à ce risque pour ne pas trouver malade corona. Ils ont remercié le public pour la compagnie et la coopération. C'est le siège même du temps enregistré 103 cas de maladie corona qui ont passé. Le gouvernement, c'est le aussi, j'ai trouvé la vaccine, plusieurs vaccines dans Pfizer, le gouvernement de l'Amérique. Et monsieur, madame, ça c'est côté nous avons une nouvelle là pour aujourd'hui. Moi, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder et pour vous avoir une invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore citer, conserver la vie, et je vous présente une autre nouvelle à courir. Je vous remercie de vous présenter au revoir. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humari Mark.